prime the pieces in gray and brown. I have a few different colors here with some water and a one inch chip brush. Watered the paint down quite a bit and I'm just splotching it on. For variety's sake, I'm going with a few different shades of gray here. Notice I'm keeping the paint pretty thin, pretty watered down. There's really no need to use an actual model paint here, some technical paint. This stuff works just fine. There's Beady, she's being sweet until she's not sweet. And I've mixed up a darker shade of brown to pull out some of the different bricks. Um, just trying to get some variety there so everything's not quite so uniform. Trying to keep this pretty random, not really make a pattern, just have these sporadically in places. I'm going to do this with a few different shades, a few different colors. Here I've got some yellow. Again, I'm just pulling those bricks out at random, trying not to, to make a pattern there. Got some orange, some red, and I'm even gonna go with a little bit of green, though that's more just for toning down some of the more vibrant colors. I'm going over everything with some thinned out white paint I'm just splotching that on with a chip brush that's had its bristles cut down. It's a very quick and easy way to get some variety, get a little bit of depth. Here I'm going over the base with a fairly medium brown coat. It doesn't quite match the brown primer, but it's pretty close, and it's all going to get a wash, so I'm just kind of cutting in some of these lines here, covering up the gray wash that I got on on the rock. You don't have to be too particular about this, just try to leave a fairly clean line between the, the base and the tower itself. Cleaning this up was a fairly quick process. All I was trying to do was get rid of the splatter and whatever gray I might have gotten on the base coming in here and pulling out some of the wooden detail on the tower itself the windows the door that sort of thing not really going overboard here uh, trying to keep it fairly clean and neat but if I get a little excess paint on there I'm not too terribly worried about it just coming in here with a larger brush to block out this big area All of these windows are recessed, so they're actually pretty easy to, to paint, to pull out the detail. Doesn't take too long, and it's a fairly clean process. After I finish the wood detail, I'm going over certain areas with green, kind of going for an algae look here. Not necessarily moss. I think if I were going to try to do that, I'd, I'd go with something a little heavier, like possibly painted sawdust or even very short static grass, kind of muddled and sort of mottled into place. Also, I'm going with a few shades of green here. I don't want this too uniform. Also, I'm making sure not to cover the majority of it. Okay, here I am dry brushing the base, trying to pull out some of that texture pattern, some of that dirt and rock. I go with a couple of progressively lighter layers of brown, just trying to highlight some of that sand and rock on the base. And I have started washing the tower with this homemade wash I've made trying to pull out some of those details it's a dark sepia wash I made it with a couple of different inks some water 
matte medium, and a flow aid. It gets pretty good coverage, and it's very cheap in comparison to a GW wash or even something like a Army Painter or Vallejo wash. Though I will say it dries somewhat satin as opposed to flat. It is a pretty nice wash though, or you know, at least nice enough for terrain. I don't know that I would use this on miniatures. Maybe I would, but yeah, for large terrain pieces, this stuff works great. Also, I basically go over the whole piece in this one wash. It's a dark brown, so it works for the brick. It also works for the dirt. Now I'm coming in with a little bit of black paint to kind of stain some of this stonework and woodwork. Just sort of thinning that stuff out and smearing it around a bit. Trying to keep it fairly moderate and subdued. This is the primed tower roof and the windmill parts that I've made. Everything's been primed in gray and brown. For the windmill hub here, I'm just going with a basic brown coat. I'm going to do the same thing for the roof. This windmill vane structure is getting the same treatment. Just a thinned out brown wash. Well, thinned out paint wash. I don't know what you'd call this exactly. It's, it's thin paint. No real reason to get detailed or technical at this point. It's kind of a dirty process. I could go with an airbrush here, but honestly this one inch chip brush makes shorter work of this project than an airbrush would. And I'm just gonna go ahead and blast through all four of these with that thinned out brown craft paint. Again, no real reason to use something expensive. This is all going to get dry brushed and washed a little later, so you won't even see most of it. And here I'm just coating that roof with some thinned out brown paint, working it into all the recesses. Some of that primer didn't get into those cracks and crevices. So I'm just going to uh, kind of assure myself that I've got paint absolutely everywhere. The fact that the primer didn't go on in a completely saturated full coat is perfectly fine. And I am wet blending some black into that brown. I'm going fairly heavy with this. After it dries, it's going to, to dry a bit lighter. And I'm going to come back and dry brush everything up, up brown, so it's not quite as dark as it looks, at least initially. Now I've mixed up a lighter brown here. I'm just dry brushing everything. I do this a few times with progressively lighter tints or shades or whatever of brown. Eventually I work my way up to white on everything, but that's uh, honestly, it's, it's negligible, hardly noticeable at all. veins I'm just going over everything like I did the roof this hub also I'm going to come in now and pull out some of these metal rivets, nails, whatever, in the hub and in these veins. I'm just going over this with a, a GW metallic. I've not really found a craft paint metallic that has the 
pigment load that model paint does and this is a, a small enough application that I don't necessarily feel like I'm wasting this paint by going over these parts with it certainly I wouldn't do this for the entire tower but again this is this is fairly negligible and after I finish with the base coat of course everything's going to get wash I'm probably not gonna dry brush these metallics but I'll like I said I'll certainly wash them I'm coming in now and roughing in some of this white on these windmill veins back to the cheap craft paint just thinned out not much to really tell here thinned out craft paint uh, you know obviously doesn't have a, a high pigment count but it's not too bad here coming in with a detail brush and blobbing that in some of the recesses this is all going to get a few different pretty heavy washes, so you don't have to be too careful, but try to be fairly careful. So I'm just using a medium detail brush to cut in all these lines. Again, nothing too crazy. Now that I've gone over the surface of all of those, I'm coming in with a wash. Kind of darken up some of that woodwork, the roof and the windmill vanes. And for this, I am using GW and Vallejo washes. I'm sure I could make something that would work for this, but I haven't yet. So that's why I did not use homemade washes for this part of the process. I've just got a few different shades of brown. I think I used four brown washes in this project or in this particular process here. I guess for the, uh, the wood grains, everything from almost a red wash to a medium brown, dark brown, and a black. Kind of the same thing for these veins. Though I kept that a bit more simple. It's a much smaller area than the roof was, so I didn't really feel that I needed quite the variety in this as I would a much larger area. On the veins, I'm going with grays and blues and blacks. Kind of muddling some of that together. Trying to create a bit of variety without going too overboard. I think I was able to accomplish that fairly well. There's nothing complex at all about this, just kind of blending those washes together on the surface itself as opposed to on a palette and then adding them to your final project. A very quick way to get some variety. I think this was a nice compromise. especially after the white dry brush, which you are seeing go on right now. There is absolutely nothing fancy about this dry brush. It's pretty much just white. I go over it lighter in a few places and, and heavier in a few places, I'm trying to kind of regulate everything without being too uniform. And as you can see, I'm just using a old shop towel here dry out that brush and get that excess paint off of there going too heavy here could make the project take a bit longer if you've got to go back and forth dry brushing and washing to fix old mistakes here is that windmill vein hub that I have painted brown and kind of pulled out some of the detail on it I've also washed this in the back side here I've drilled a hole this is a 3 16ths of an inch hole 
just the right size for a chopstick to fit into. If you don't have any chopsticks readily available, a small dowel rod would certainly work. That is going to correspond with the hole here in the window on the roof, which is where that hub is going to end up. These veins are going to fit in here like this. And to secure them and the face, I'm going to use hot glue. And here you see the result of that. Take a little piece of chopstick here. I don't end up gluing that in, I just let it do its thing it's a, it's a pretty tight fit so but not so tight it can't rotate hey windmill who knew no eagles died during the making of this also here is a piece of mesh uh, something for gutters to keep leaves from from filling your gutters I guess I got from a hardware store. Put a little electric LED tea light candle in it and make a loop or cylinder, and you've got the makings of a lighthouse. Okay, here I've gone over the surface of the base with some tacky glue, which I'm tapping down. I want pretty good coverage on this, but not, you know, complete, utter, total coverage, just the vast majority of this covered. I don't really leave open spaces, but if the static grass isn't as heavy everywhere, that's, that's a good thing. And I'm going over this with a static grass applicator. Be careful with these. You can zap yourself. I've done it many a time. That said, I made my static grass applicator. So I, I don't know how safe it is in relation to other static grass applicators. Yeah, it's funny. I thought I was saving myself some money by building this thing, but honestly, I think the static grass applicator I made probably cost more than some of the cheaper to mid-range static grass applicators you could buy. Okay, and here is the finished product. You see a windmill, you see a lighthouse. There's Carl, and I guess Bob. Bob's a space wolf, Carl's a chaos marine. So yeah, this was a nice project where basically you just make one set of molds that you can use to make something somewhat different. You could kind of put a few of these on the table without it looking too repetitive or too crazy. Hey Bob. And you could always add a little motor to that windmill hub if you uh, felt the need to have it rotate without blasting some big fan right beside of it. This is it. Carl. Peace. Thanks for watching. Bye.